Hi everyone, welcome back to the tea table. This is Michelle with Tea Time Creations, and today we're going to be starting our first ever soap challenge. We're going to be doing a piping challenge. We're going to make this adorable, cute little Santa cupcake, and I'm going to show you the steps on how to do it. All right, so let's go over our piping tips that we're going to be using today. We're going to use an array of round opening tips. The first one I'm using is the number five, which is the yellow. It's a small. The second one I'm using is a number 12, which is the peach color that you see in the photo. The third I'm using is 2A, and it's a rather large opening. And then the extra large that I'm using, which is optional, is the 1A that I'm using, and it's the mint green in your photograph. And of course, if you have a coupler, you're going to want to use that. Um, I also am using the basket weave tip, which is the number 47 tip, a very small star tip, which is a number 24 star tip. This one is optional. You, you could use just a round tip if you wanted to. And then, of course, I'm using the grass tip, which is number 233. You're also going to need some cupcake soap bases. This is the mold that I've chosen to use for this project. I like the look of it, and I usually have some extra cupcakes laying around to practice piping on. Now today I'm piping this project using cold process whipped soap on top of my pre-made cupcake basis, but you're welcome to go ahead and do it all in one day if you want to go ahead and skip that step. If you're comfortable working with cold process soap and then piping on top using cold process soap, you're welcome to do so. Let's go ahead and get started on my project. First we're going to pipe the body of Santa using our red soap batter. I am using the large tipped opening which is tip 2A. If you've never piped on top of a cupcake before, the way that you hold your piping bag is straight up and you're going to apply even pressure while you're moving your bag around in a circle. So you're going to begin by putting a dollop in the middle of your cupcake and then making three circles around holding your bag completely straight up and that way you get that little peak at the top. Now since the camera really hasn't given you a very good view here, the first two that I've done were a little difficult for you to see. So I'm going to go ahead and do another one for you. All right, now let's see if we can get a little better angle here for you. First, I do need to add some more soap batter to my bag, which is why I do recommend getting the larger size bags. Oops, and there I dropped a little bit out the end. My frosting um, is it's a little bit soft, but it's still workable. So here I'm just putting a dollop in the middle of my soap base. Right there. And I'm going to attempt to pipe a circle around so that you can see. My bag here is being held on an angle like if you were to imagine the face of a clock I'm probably holding it at <clears throat> the one o'clock or two o'clock angle. Normally I would hold it straight up pointing to 12 o'clock but if I were to do that I wouldn't give you a very good view of the cupcake. So I've already made one pass around, now I'm making my second pass. And notice the second circle, I'm almost making a donut shape. The second circle sits in just slightly from the first circle. So you're going to start out wide at the bottom and then go narrow at the top and that's how you form your peak. And then we'll do one more around. And again, I'm running out of frosting. But we'll go ahead and get just enough in there, kind of spread it around a little bit. So it's not the most perfect shape swirl, but that's okay um, because we're just going to cover it up. Now. now in a perfect world, this is what the ideal cupcake swirl looks like. You basically have three rings, which means you're going to make three passes around your cupcake. 
but it's a little difficult to achieve. So if you're a beginner and you have difficulty piping your cupcake swirl all in one single line like a swirled snake or a rope, then feel free just to continue to use the technique I showed you where you put your dollop of icing in the middle and then you're going to make three donut shaped rings around that dollop starting from large on the bottom, medium in the middle, and a very small ring at the top. And in this case, we don't really need a perfectly formed cupcake peak because we're going to be piping Santa's face on the top. In this case, I am making Santa's face with a very small amount of orange mica just so that my Santa has a very pale, peachy kind of skin color to differentiate between his face and the, the white in his beard. And of course, if you prefer darker color skin tones, then I encourage you to experiment with some coffee colored micas or bronze colored micas and you know, make your Santa the way that you want to make your Santa. You do you. That's what I tell people all the time. You do you. That's the beauty about art. So let's go ahead and pipe his face on. We're just going to basically pipe a, a circle or a dollop, if you will, on the top of our cupcake. And so here I apparently didn't quite like the shape of my circle, so I'm just kind of spreading my frosting around with the end of my piping tip to reshape it a little bit. Now when you make your Santa's face, it's just like putting the beginning dollop on our cupcake base that we did in the beginning. You hold your bag straight up in the 12 o'clock position and you're just going to apply gentle pressure and lift at the same time. So squeeze your bag and gently lift up. Now we're going to go ahead and pipe our Santa hat and I'm going back to the medium piping tip, the round piping tip, which is the number 12. And we're going to pipe the Santa hat using the same technique that we used to make the perfect cupcake swirl. We're going to gently squeeze and go around in a circle, lifting up as we do that. And we're going to make three passes. And here I put it on a little bit too much of an angle. I started on the side of Santa's head and I should have done it a little bit more in the middle and I didn't like the way that it kind of turned out. <clears throat> so I just took my scissors and chopped it off because I didn't like it and I'm going to start over. And that's kind of the nice thing about doing these piping techniques is you kind of keep covering up your mistakes over and over again. I am not perfect. None of my creations turn out the way that I originally anticipate they will. And uh, it's always a surprise to me what they look like in the end. And here you've got your three perfect swirls or three, three rings perfectly. It's almost like, I hate to say it, and I really, I really don't like to say it because I, I really don't like the, um, shall we say, the doo-doo emoji that is so popular these days. But that's almost what it looks like if you wanted something to compare it, compare it to. So I'm here going back <clears throat> to try and fix my mistake. And I'm going to pipe a snake, the perfect cupcake swirl, three passes to make the Santa hat. Now you'll notice on my Santa hat, I did not actually pipe a dollop in the middle and then do my swirl around just because I'm working with a very small, um, you know, cir uh, peak circle that I'm working with. So it just wasn't necessary in this case. And if you're still having trouble piping that kind of perfect coil, then go ahead and just pipe three dollops, one right on top of the other, and that will give you the same look and kind of trick the eye without actually having to pipe that perfectly one piece snake curl. Let's go ahead and switch angles here and try and give you a little bit better view um, of Santa while I pipe his beard on. We're going to use the grass tip which is the multi-opening tip, and set your piping tip 
just barely touching your, your Santa's face. And as you squeeze your icing out of the bag, you're going to gently pull away. And the angle of my piping bag generally points to 2 o'clock as I'm doing this. Okay, now I'm going to grab my small star tip so that I can make the fluff or the fur on Santa's hat. I'm going to gently squeeze one star on the top point of Santa's hat and that's going to give me the pom-pom that's typically seen on the top of Santa's hat. Then I'm going to use that same star tip and make small stars across the border of his hat. So where the red hat meets the Santa's face right on the border there where the two colors meet you're just gonna make you're gonna pipe a a row of stars around and that's gonna kind of tie everything in together when I pipe I typically build in layers and pipe in layers so you start out small with one technique and just keep adding to it and then eventually you have your final piece and there's a little bit of a close-up of his his hat and of course you can see I have my towel next to me for um, wiping my hands on or wiping my tip on to clear it of any frosting that may may accumulate on the end so I always keep a wet towel handy and I think I've mentioned that in some of my past videos but I, I do always keep a wet towel handy when I'm piping because piping work can be a little bit messy and, and I'm a messy soaper anyway so let's go ahead and, and do another row of stars uh, on Santa's hat. And so I, I actually forgot to record when I piped on um, Santa's eyes and buttons. So I'll go ahead and repipe those for you. I am using, I actually just used black um, activated charcoal for his black eyes. And I'm using the very small tip, which is the number five. And again, you're just going to pipe some dots for his two eyes and here you're going to pipe buttons although I would recommend piping his belt buckle on before piping the buttons I made the mistake of piping the buttons on first and uh, I wish I wouldn't have done that I should have piped the belt buckle on first and so let's get to Santa's belt I am using my basket weaving tip and you're going to want to keep the ruffled side facing you. And that gives you the texture in his belt. And so I'm just going to hold my bag at a 45 degree angle, apply gentle even pressure, and pull my bag around Santa, the base of Santa, at the same time. So where my cupcake base meets the um, swirl that we piped for Santa's belly, right where those two meet, that's where I chose to place my belt. You could put your belt anywhere you want on your cupcake or you don't have to use a belt at all, but this is what I decided to do um, for my Santa. Of course it's a little difficult to pipe and turn my cupcake at the same time and yet still get a decent view for the camera. If I wasn't filming, I, I would be doing this a little bit differently. Sometimes I like to use a turntable. They're relatively inexpensive if you were to pick one up at the cake supply store um, and that will enable you to actually keep your cupcake on the base and then you just spin the turntable around so you don't have to use two hands most spinning your cupcake in one and then piping with the other. Now my hands were a little shaky filming and turning at the same time but when you pipe with this tip this ideally is what your line would look like. This is like I've said a basket weaving tip and so typically you would keep your bag at a 45 degree angle apply even pressure squeezing and then dragging your bag at the same time as you squeeze and that should give you nice even lines. Now we're actually pretty close to finishing our project today. We're going to do the gold 
belt buckle that Santa has. I think it's gold. Uh, but anyway, you can make it certainly any color you want. I did use gold mica that I added to my white soap base. But I've noticed gold micas in the whip frosting really just kind of turn out yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and pipe these with my um, small round opening tip, which is the number five. And then I'm going to go back and dust it with the mica so that the gold really gives me a little bit of a shimmer. And what I've done is I've basically just piped a rectangle with an open center. And that's going to give me his belt buckle. So I've done two vertical lines on each side with horizontal lines in the middle to form an open space rectangle. And then I went ahead and also just to highlight my buttons a little bit, I've gone ahead and added um, another dot, dot on top of the black buttons. And then here is our finished project. We've basically created a roly-poly Santa. <laughs> And we've built him together in layers, and you can go as heavy or as light as you want on the beard. Um, I did put some uh, some eyebrows on Santa when I piped my eyes, which I forgot to mention in the video. And here I added some glitter. I've gone over the belt buckle and the buttons with silver, I'm sorry, gold mica, and I added some glitter to Santa's beard on the red cupcake bottom. I put some glitter on that as well. And so congratulations, you guys. You just completed your very first ever piping challenge. I really wanted to do just a simple cupcake for our first piping challenge, but I didn't want to pass up the opportunity to do a Christmas cupcake. And so what we did was we built on the basic technique of doing the standard cupcake swirl, and then we just added to that to make our cupcake a little bit more ornate. And hopefully these will be done in time for you to give away to your family and friends for Christmas. So that's it for today. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I'll see you next time at the tea table. I really hope that you enjoyed your first cupcake challenge.